morning dear students in today's session we will be discussing about another endocrine disorder and it is very commonest among children and one of the reason for emergency admissions in pediatric or intensive care units that is diabetes mellitus so in children what is happening in diabetes we can see in detail diabetes mellitus it is a chronic disorder of metabolism so here the abnormality the main problem is happening because of the abnormalities in the metabolism and it is the deficiency like partial or complete deficiency of the hormone insulin so in children the main reason is the complete or partial deficiency of insulin hormone it is most common metabolic disease resulting in metabolic adjustment or physiological change in all almost all the areas of the body so it is a metabolic disorder and changes adjustments are made in different parts of our body in all parts of or all areas of the body when you are talking about childhood diabetes earlier it was known as juvenile onset type of diabetes later it is called as IDDM or insulin dependent diabetes mellitus that was based on the treatment options which was given for the uh, this particular childhood diabetes and now the name the name has again changed into type 1 diabetes so we are now making a differentiation in the name of diabetes based on the insulin or whether the person is dependent on insulin or not so now the term is using for juvenile diabetes is type 1 diabetes or type 1 diabetes mellitus that is affecting children and young adults below 18 years so this is about the childhood diabetes so earlier it was juvenile onset later it became IDDM now it became type 1 diabetes And regarding the incidence of diabetes mellitus, it is estimated that childhood diabetes accounts for around 5% of total population of diabetes. So it is very few in number when you are comparing the large population of uh, diabetic adults. So children are around 5% among the diabetic group. In India alone, there are likely to be about 4 lakh infants and children with this disease. And it occurs at any age but has the peak incidence between the age of 10 and 15 years. So this is about the incidence and prevalence of juvenile diabetes mellitus. Again some more important points about childhood diabetes. Childhood diabetes is usually rapid in onset often first presenting as diabetic coma. So when you are comparing the adult diabetes, already you have studied the particular topic in second year I think. So it will, it is slow in onset like some amount of uh, increased intake of food will be the especially sugar items will be the child, the person will be presenting obesity and slowly it progress to uh, diabetes mellitus. But in childhood diabetes, Suddenly the child will become unconscious and the child will be brought to the casualty with the coma condition. So that is the important appearance of or presentation of patient like childhood diabetes. So it is rapid in onset and usually the first presentation of the person will be diabetic coma. So that is the seriousness of this condition. Unlike adult diabetes, obesity plays no role in childhood diabetes and we can compare that in when you are noticing a child with the diabetes, the child will be very thin and it will be emaciated look will be there for the child comparing to adult type of type 2 diabetes in that the person will be obese and we will be with the overweight. So this is another difference between the childhood and adult diabetes. And the third one is children always need injectable insulin and most adults with diabetes respond to all hypoglycemic agents. And the reason is that children are with the deficiency that is the complete or partial deficiency of production of insulin from pancreas. And in most adults what happens is they have a resistance 
to this insulin or there will be deficient production so pancreas is de decreased production is the or the body need is more so in that condition the increasing in the production that is with the oral hypoglycemic agents the adults will be able to manage diabetes but instead of that in children it is very difficult to manage with oral hypoglycemic agent they need injectable insulin and the next is diabetic control alone never works in diabetic children so they need insulin and they need the dietary or other exercise support but in adults it can they can prolong the uh, starting of medication by amount of decreasing or diet control or exercise or any other activity so these are the some of the important points about childhood diabetes and some differences are like what we have already told onset will be rapid and obvious in type 1 slow slow and insidious in type 2 that is already we have discussed and age of onset usually usually it is type 1 is below 30 years and type 2 it is after 30 years usually this getting in obesity there is no role and in type 1 diabetes we can notice that the child will be very thin without adequate weight then predisposing factor is the obesity for type 2 diabetes and and the runners family history there is only 10 percentage chance of getting a family history with type 1 diabetes because and the second is type 2 with a strong family history if the parents and other siblings are having type 2 definitely the child, person can have uh, a strong chance of getting diabetes Keto acidosis is a very common problem in type 1 diabetes and usually the first presenting manifestation of a child with diabetes will be a keto acidosis or a coma condition but it is very very insignificant or we can say that it is a very absent in type 2 diabetes and need for insulin as we name it is IDDM insulin dependent it is universally we are giving the treatment that is insulin and type 2 uncommon in the sense we will be starting the treatment with oral hypoglycemic agents and in difficult situation only we will be giving insulin in type 2 diabetes so these are the some of the type differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes so hope you understood what you uh, studied in last year and in this year what when you are comparing childhood diabetes even though the pathophysiology and the other problems will be same but the patient presentation and the uh, the details of pathophysiology like how it happens in a child these whole things will be different so hope you it's clear next is the etiological considerations so a single etiology is not clear but some theories are explaining different Uh, explanations for the etiology for the juvenile diabetes almost 95 percentage of pediatric cases belong to the idiopathic category so that is very clear idiopathic that means etiology is unknown unknown etiology suddenly the child is presenting with a coma and the child is brought to casualty diagnosing type 1 diabetes so this is happening normally in a child comparing to adult eating more and more and getting diabetes so there is etiology is clear but here etiology is unclear in majority of the reasons majority of the cases so the absolute deficiency of insulin is believed to be a hereditary inborn error of metabolism so usually we ex- try to explain the reason etiology for juvenile diabetes like it can be a hereditary inborn error of metabolism so the evidence is that the siblings identical twins in particular shows higher incidence than the parents so when the children are twins both children will get the condition rather than getting a parent with uh, parent with the diabetes so here what we are telling is from pa- if the parent is having juvenile diabetes the chances get there but 
more chances for a twins with both with the uh, juvenile diabetes it may be secondary to causes as cushing syndrome hyperpituitarism and surgical removal of the pancreas so these are the other etiological considerations even though it is 95 percentages with the idiopathy category then the risk factors so when it is uh, etiology is unclear we have to talk about what are the risk factors which leads to diabetes so genetic factors they are divided into gestational diabetes so if the mother had diabetes mellitus during the gestational period there is again risk is the impaired glucose tolerance in obese and non obese children that can be another risk factor genetic factors associated with b cell dysfunction and insulin resistance then insulin dependent diabetes mellitus is a polygenic disorder the major locus is hla so human leukocyte antigen region short term chrome of chromosome 6 this locus is referred to as iddm so what happens is when a person is with hla gene hla that is human leukocyte antigen uh, presence is there in the chromosome 6 that person is having a risk for getting diabetes if he exposed to certain conditions so that we will be discussing so that's about the genetic factor so there are some reasons which leads to uh, genetic defect and the exact defect is in hla that is hla is present in the chromosome number 6 short term of chromosome 6 and that person is having more risk for getting a diabetes juvenile diabetes so when the person is exposed with environmental factors so hla antigen uh, carrying person when he is exposed with environmental factors that is they they are relatively low in number like viral infection in utero inconsistent with observation that incidence of iddm increased in children with congenital rubella then igm antibodies against coxsackie's virus have been found in 25 to 30 percentage of new cases suggesting recent infection so then that is another reason that is environmental factor especially infection with certain viruses and dietary factors that is a positive association between iddm now it is type 1 diabetes high protein intake and frequency of consumption of foods containing nitrosamine in seen in close controlled studies so these are the some of the theoretical explanations for the incidence of diabetes and other factors hope you are clear so that is a genetic factor and it increases the incidence when the genetic factor is present along with that he exposed to certain infections and dietary factors so next is a pathogenesis so pathogenesis it can be autoimmunity that is islets of newly diagnosed persons show histological picture of marked mononuclear cell infiltration around islets so we can see in many of the diagnosed person we can find out the presence of auto antibodies so that is the presence of autoimmunity so that's why in some viral infections the person will be producing antibody against the pathogen but accidentally it will destroy the pancreas and it decreases the production of insulin hormone so that is about the autoimmunity so islet cell antibodies or ica they are present in 80 percentage of cases of children at the time of diagnosis long term follow up has shown that family members with ica are at increased risk of progression to diabetes so there is presence of some amount of islet cell antibody maybe it will be producing as a result of any infection or any other reasons but it can be present in majority of the patients and their family members and there is a increased chance of production of diabetes then is the b cell destruction the process is slow with a patchy histological appearance in newly diagnosed persons and clinical onset of diabetes does not occur until 90% of the cells have been destroyed so b cell destruction is also related to pancreas destruction 
so if 90 percentage of b cell is distracted then there will be chances of uh, destruction of pancreas and other body tissues so this is about the pathogenesis so so hope you understood the comparison of uh, adult diabetes and the juvenile diabetes and understood tail pathogenesis i'm breaking the video and we'll continue in the next video thank you